Ooh. Might not be a half bad one. Come on. This way. This way. <laughs> there we go. Stonker. Beautiful fish. G'day guys, so been a bit busy lately but I'm sick of tired of not being able to get any content so I thought this morning we'll sneak out quickly to go for a little whiting pop, haven't had any plans lately um, but the weather's okay-ish, a little bit of breeze but we'll see how we go. Um, yeah, so we'll jump in the car, drive down to my little spot and see how we go. Eh? Cool. So, we pulled up, big girls over there, ready to go. So as I said, last minute sort of session, don't even have anything rigged up. We just got back from Pemberton where we caught some rainbow trout and stuff, went freshwater fishing. Haven't done much of that before, but uh, yeah, rod's not even in pieces, haven't tied any rigs, so might, uh, might show you guys how to do that whilst I'm at it. Um, then we'll go for a quick flick, eh? Cool, so today we crack it out the Luvius, the new Luvius. She hasn't had a uh, proper day of the whiting yet. She's just a newie, so see if she can handle it today if you can find any. There she is, nice little girl. Actually, I've just realised I've forgotten my wading boots, so that's alright, we'll just get a few crab nips in the toes whilst we're at it. So I like to run a little Darwa shoulder bag, flies here. Get your water bottle. That's my sort of lighting box. There's a few floats and stuff in the trout from Pemberton, but uh, this is generally just my whiting lures. I reckon I'll run with this guy today. Trusty little sugar pen. So we're off to a good start today. We've got the wading boots. And I forgot sunscreen. Um, and it is sort of end of November, so. I reckon if I hang out for too long, which is possible if the fish are biting, then I'm gonna get fried. It's a little loop knot. Generally, I like to use um, some little silent clips just so I can change my lures out a bit. But I ran out of them. So now we're just tie straight on. So, for those of you who haven't done much whiting popping before, I'll teach you the basics. So, sort of a 1,000 size Shimano or 2,000 size Darwa reel. Uh, this is 2,000 size Luvius. It's pulled with a five pound um, sunline. So, yeah, the lighter your braid, the further you're going to be able to cast, the more you feel the fish, and yeah, a bit more fun. You've got the old in feet. Seven foot two uh, ultralight. Um, bit of length on the flats helps you cast. So I've got a seven eight crucis which casts a mile as well. So the longer you rod, the better you're going to cast. 
the lighter your rod, the better you're going to cast as well because they're only 3 gram lures. Um, so this is 10 gram cast weight uh, and 10 pound line. 3 pound to 10 pound line is basically. Um, so yeah, 5 pound line down to a 4 pound litre, sorry. That's only because of my other rod, I run 4 pound and that's the only litre I've got at the moment. Generally I like to run about 30 centimetres or 40 centimetres of um, litre, but today since I was trout fishing the other day I got a bit more on because I was changing out the lures without the clip uh, and you lose a bit changing your lures. Down to your sugar pen um, or whatever little popper sort of stick bait you want and I like to put the Ocean Legacy assist hooks on the back of those because they are the only hooks I've found that do not rust um, after chucking them back in your tackle box a couple of times and using them and they are needle sharp and so yeah that's your little rig make sure you got the assist hook so you get better hookups it makes a world of difference um, and yeah let's see if we can show you how to catch some fish the other thing which is cool to have which I forgot to mention is a little net um, because as good as you think you are, you're always going to drop fish right next to you, like 50% of them. I thought I was too good for a net about four years ago when I started getting into it. And no one's too good for a net. Yeah, they're, they're slippy buggers and they've got soft mouths. They love to drop hooks. Um, which isn't too bad if you're just catching for sport, like me. It doesn't matter if you let them go, but if anyone's catching for a bit of a feed, then yeah. You're going to want to keep them and you're going to want to get them into your basket instead of dropping them all at your feet. So yeah, um, good set of sunnies. I've got spotters on today. Uh, that makes a world of difference spotting all the little sand flats out here. Because uh, as you can see there's a bit of mottled ground. Um, and you want to be casting over the sand patches like this one. Uh, next to this seaweed. That's the sort of prime position to be. Um, so there's a nice flat over here I'm just going to head to barefoot which is obviously probably not ideal because of that little bloody crabs everywhere in this estuary which is cool it means it's healthy but um not cool for the toes because they are pointy little bastards let's go so i don't know if you can see it little hole in the middle of all this seaweed here that's a little sand patch that's where you're whiting like to gather um there's the old luvius lovely um, so you're going to want, I'm going to have to cast into the wind today, which is okay because it's not crazy strong at this second. Uh, it's going to pick up soon though. You always want to cast with the wind behind your back to get the biggest cast because it can make the difference between a sort of 15 metre cast and a 30 metre cast that way. I find that this time of year, um, so late November, a bit early in the season where the water's a bit cooler still, that uh, you don't have to go too much past knee depth because the um, fish like the warmer water, so your shallower water is warmer this time of year. Later on in January and stuff where all the water's warm, then waist deep they'll still be hidden poppers. Uh, and that's where you get all your big ones up to your 40 centimetre ones, which is pretty cool. Um, let's see if there's any in here, eh? First cast of the day. So when you're working stick baits like your sugar pen, you want to keep the tip wiggling real fast gives it a rapid action um, just a slow retrieval it means that the, your stick bait if your stick bait's doing a zigzag back towards you you know it's working properly so, so I don't think anything's over this hole the other trick to whiting popping is just to keep moving changing ground uh, you'll find the fish they won't come to you so I prefer to be making like those X mount videos for you guys which are action-packed and got some nice footage in it but um I'm going to start doing a few of these tutorials just to keep up the content because um, not every day you get to go to Exmouth to get some awesome uh, big long fishing trips. Some of us need to just fit in a couple of hours in the morning every here, every now and then. So um, yeah, tell us what you think of, of the tutorials. So guys, I fished for another five minutes the other day and it was just too windy. Couldn't get any bites, couldn't see any fish, it was murky, dirty. So changed my mind, decided that I'd come another day when the conditions are a bit better. And that's today. We might meet Liam's come down from uh, Perth. <laughs> He's gonna be joining us today. But um, hopefully we can find some good specimens and these better conditions. So, 
one of the biggest things about whiting fishing, most important thing, is to pick the area you're going to pop and stick bait. Um, as you can see in the drone footage here, you want some mottled seagrass or seaweed ground. So you want a bit of seaweed with sand patches in between. And you want to be flicking those sand patches in between there. Um, because that's where the whiting are sitting off the weed waiting for shrimp and fish to pop out and they're going to smash it. Um, you can see a bit of a deeper hole over there. Right in the centre of the screen now. That's sort of where we were catching some good fish just then. Um, yeah, really important just to pick your ground before you go and just willy nilly chuck out some lures wherever you want. Got a little ting on the Luvius. Oh, might not be a half bad one. Here's a bit I'm a bit of, out of practice off, is uh, netting them after a season off. Here's week, here's week. <laughs> there we go. Stonker. Liam caught a little tiddler. Nice job, Liam. Put down the GoPro for two seconds um, because my face is getting sunburnt because my hat was on backwards so the camera could be up there. And uh, we've got another good one. Oh, we got a nice little eagle ray coming to join the party. This guy's easy sized. Big fella. Leaving someone else. Hey. Unless he hangs around a bit too much. Nothing special, but. Oh, yeah. It's just a tiddler. Good take, though. There you go, little pup. <laughs> well guys, this is what we were after. A nice yellow fin whiting from the estuary. We've got some stonkers today, it's good. He's off. Um, so yeah, probably got about six or seven fish all up. Um, but yeah, a couple of tiddlers, a few of them good sizes like that. Uh, as you can see in this shot coming up, the GoPro, I just looked at the footage and the GoPro footage was absolutely average. tutorial today anyway um, which I, I think we got out of it so yeah hopefully you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time